Now let's go ahead and create a function that will allow us to walk this entire templates directory and then go ahead and parse each one of our templates without having to go ahead and do this manually for each one of the templates. So we'll essentially have a template instance that we can then go ahead and use to execute or render any of the templates that we need here inside of the templates directory. But before we go ahead and do that, let's first of all go ahead and install Sprig, which is essentially a way for us to have a set of functions inside of our Go templates, which will allow us to essentially build templates and build um, our user interface in a much simpler way than we would otherwise. So as you can see, we get here a bunch of different functions, not only trim, wrap, uh, we also get here stuff around JSON, so from JSON and to JSON, but the one that we'll be using the most is going to be here the dictionaries, so we can go ahead and pass to each one of our templates a set of data that we can then go ahead and use inside of those templates. Before we continue, if you want to learn more in depth how to build a SAS application from scratch using HTMX and Go and get one-on-one -on -one help when doing it, click the link below to join the HTMX Go SAS Blueprint, a complete A to Z course on how to build and launch a SAS application using HTMX, Go, PostgreSQL and other technologies. I'm still building the course, so if you want to get notified and get free access to exclusive videos before they are released, go to webdevfuel.com forward slash HGSB or click the link in the description below to go ahead and sign up. So let's move back here to our project directory. Let's go ahead and stop here the server and then let's go ahead and install Spring. With this done, let's go ahead and move back to our code editor and let's go ahead and create a new file, which we'll call temple.go. Now inside of this file, let's go ahead and define here our package main, and then let's go ahead and create the function that will again allow us to walk this entire templates directory, and then go ahead and parse each one of the templates. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this one parse templates, and then this function will take no arguments and it will return a possible error. Now let's go ahead and define our first template instance. So go ahead and type in here temple and then colon equals. And then let's go ahead and grab here template from the HTML package. And finally, after doing this, let's go ahead and say here that we want to use the new function. Then we'll pass in here an empty string. And after doing that, let's do the following. We want to use here the funks method. So we can go ahead and pass into this method our spring functions. So let's go ahead and say that in here we want to grab here spring and then we want to use this function map method. Now the reason we are essentially defining in here first of all a template is because we want to go ahead and then extend this template instance that we have in here. So when we go ahead and parse each one of our templates inside the templates directory, we simply go ahead and assign a new template to this instance. So we can then go ahead and have all of our templates assigned in here. Now let's go ahead and type the following error colon equals, and then we want to go ahead and use here the file path package. And after doing that, let's go ahead and use the walk method. And in here, the first argument is going to be the directory that we want to go ahead and walk. So in this case, it is templates. And the second argument is going to be a function that as you can see, because of the Go language server, we get all of this auto completed for us. But what we essentially need in here is first of all the path, then we also have here info we could, which we could can go ahead and safely ignore. And after that we also get in here the possible error that might occur when we are trying to walk this entire templates directory. Now let's go ahead and save this so this gets correctly imported. And after doing that, let's go ahead and define all of the stuff that we need inside of this function. First, let's start by checking if our path that we get from here is a .html file. So let's go ahead and type in here if strings contains, and then we want to do the following. The first argument is going to be the path, and the second one is going to be the thing that we want to check if this path contains, which in this case it is HTML. Then let's go ahead and do this 
and if this doesn't contain a, uh, that HTML inside of this path, then we simply want to go ahead and return down here the possible error, which could be an actual error or nil. And now let's go ahead and take care of all of the stuff that we have inside of this if statement. First of all, let's go ahead and read this entire HTML file into a slice of bytes. So let's go ahead and say in here temple bytes. Then let's also grab the possible error and let's go ahead and use the OS package and then go ahead and type in here read file. In here, we want to go ahead and pass our path and then let's go ahead and handle this error. So if the error is different than nil, we go ahead and return the error back to this parse templates function. Now, if we were able to correctly read this file, we can go ahead and parse this entire template. So let's go ahead and ignore the first value. Then let's go ahead and grab here the error. And then we want to go ahead and instead of using template.new, we want to go ahead and use this temple instance. So let's go ahead and say temple.new. Then in here, we want to go ahead and pass our path. Then let's also go ahead and use the functions method so we can go ahead and pass in here all uh, of our functions from Sprig. Then let's go ahead and say in here parse. And in here we want to go ahead and use this string uh, function so we can go ahead and uh, essentially transform this slice of bytes into a string. And now with all of this done, let's go ahead and handle this error. So if the error is different than nil, we go ahead and return it. So let's go ahead and take another look at everything that's happening in here. First of all, we go ahead and check if the path contains that HTML. So in other words, if this is an HTML file, then we go ahead and read this into a slice of bytes. Then we go ahead and parse this entire template. So we go ahead and not only parse the entire file, but also all of the defined blocks that we might have inside each one of those files. And finally, let's go ahead and handle this stuff down here. So if the error is different than nil, we want to go ahead and return the error. And if not, we simply go ahead and return here nil. And now let's go ahead and ensure that we can access this template instance in the rest of our code. So let's go ahead and define a new variable here. Let's go ahead and call this one temple. And this is a pointer to template.template. And to keep things simple, let's simply go ahead and rename this from temple to t. And let's go ahead and do the exact same thing down here. So we want to go ahead and rename this one also. And now if we arrive at this point on our code, which means that everything went well and we didn't have any errors, we can safely go ahead and do the following. So we want to say temple equals t. And finally, let's go ahead and save this file. And let's go ahead and give this a try inside our main.go file. So here, after we go ahead, open the DB, then we close the database and also set up all of our migrations. Let's go ahead and do the following. We want to say error equals, and then let's go ahead and parse all of our templates. And if the error is different than nil, we also want to go ahead and simply panic our program. And now let's go ahead and give this a try down here. Let's simply go ahead and remove this entire line. And now, as you can see, when we go ahead and call here template that execute template, this goes ahead and uses this variable, which we then go ahead and parse all of our templates and then pass the value here to this variable. Now let's go ahead and see if all of this works. So let's go ahead and start here our server and then let's go ahead and move back to our browser. And if we navigate here to local uh, host port 3000, as you can see, this is working correctly. And that's because we went ahead and again, parse through all of these files, including the index.html that we have in here. And since we have here our defined base, and then here inside of the main.go file, we go ahead and call this template. This renders correctly.